Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm painting Dove in Easter Basket and I'm sipping on some Chardonnay. And if you do enjoy this process, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, fluorescent green, fluorescent pink, fluorescent orange, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a piece of white chalk, but you could certainly use any drawing utensil that you would like. I've got two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number six round synthetic brush. I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And again, you can certainly switch up those brushes if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy piece of chalk and everything in between. So that's down there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting the base coat to our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are black, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a pretty dark kind of, I'll refer to it as like a neutral blue. This is gonna provide us great depth within our sky and we're gonna just have a flat base coat and then we'll build all of the atmospheric dimension on top of that. So I've already kind of pre-mixed myself a little bit of the color that I'm going for. So I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush. I'm gonna just pull this out so you can kind of see the color that it is. It's just a really dark, deep kind of navy type blue. I don't need this bright blue for anything on my painting, so I'm actually gonna pre-mix all of the blue that I have. I'm gonna add a little bit of black paint and a tiny bit of white paint into it. The the combination of black and white is in essence kind of adding gray to my blue, which will make it not so vibrant or so um, bold of a color. And the black is gonna help to make it a bit darker. The black can very easily take over, so I suggest that you only add a little bit at a time. So I've got my bristle brush and I'm just adding a little bit of black and just a teeny tiny touch of white and I'm just gonna mix it together. I know that I'm probably gonna want a little more black, but I wanted to just show you in case you have a, a different type of blue than I have or a different type of paint that you really just wanna add a teeny bit at a time um, and plan for your paint to get a little bit darker as it dries. So as I'm pre-mixing this, I'm saying to myself, okay, well, I know it's gonna get a little bit darker as it dries, so I don't wanna go as dark as um, I want it to be in the end because that will, it'll end up darker than that as it dries. So I'm, I'm almost there. I'm going to, I'm going to get it just a little bit darker than this. So just a teeny bit more black. And again, I'm just adding a tiny bit at a time and I'm spinning it around. And once I've got my desired shade, I'm making sure that I've, I mixed it pretty darn good. 
maybe a little darker. I know that I want it to be a really pretty deep blue, so I'm going just a tiny bit darker with mine. But once you've got it into the um, color that you want, you're just gonna paint the whole sky. I do wanna have a nice kind of, um, I'm adding a touch more black. <laughs> I, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. I'm under some good lights here, so I can really, I can really tell if it's um, dark enough for me or not. So I've, I just continued to add my teeny tiny bit of black paint. So once I've got it to the color that I want, what I'm gonna do is during my painting process, I'm gonna try and keep it a nice, nice smooth coat. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, left to right. I might end up um, painting a second coat on this to make sure that I have a nice smooth background, but that may not be necessary for you because you might have thicker paint than I do and your paint might end up nice and smooth as you go through this painting process, but I like, I'm using a good amount of paint and I'm doing a consistent brush stroke left to right throughout the entire area. So this way I'm going to get an even coverage throughout the, um, throughout the whole canvas. So once I get it in a particular area and I feel like I've got enough paint there, I will do these long, broad, sweeping strokes that will get that paint to be nice and even throughout, um, throughout that area. So I'm just gonna continue to um, apply this blue paint throughout the entire canvas. And of course, yours might be lighter or darker than mine. Again, it's going to get a little bit darker as it dries. And if you do a second coat on it, it will get even darker because you won't, you'll be putting the second coat on top of the, um, the darker blue as opposed to on top of the white, which will make it a little bit darker naturally. So I am just gonna finish this up. And then again, I'm probably gonna let mine dry and see if I like the, um, the, the way that it dries with the color and everything. And if I need to do any adjusting or if I want my layer to be, look a little bit smoother, I will probably add a second coat. And if you want to do the same, you are more than welcome to. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful base coat layer on your sky, you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting our sun in place and its glow, but we're not gonna put the sun rays on. We'll put those on later. So I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So, you know, you can take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fanning method, be it blow on it or wave something in front of it. But I took out my blow dryer and blow dried it. <laughs> so that was my quickest method to get my painting dry. So I recommend that yours is dry too. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to be putting my sun somewhere in this vicinity. I'm gonna be using white. I will also be using my sky color and I'm gonna pre-mix myself a light blue as well so I can transition from my sun into the dark blue with a nice gradient. So I'm gonna save some of my original blue but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of white with it and make myself a shade of blue that's somewhere between white and my dark blue. So I'm just taking that dark blue that I had and adding a little bit of white to it. So now that I have that, I've gotta wash and dry my brush <laughs> because I want my brush to be clean to start this step. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. I guess I could have mixed my paint with my smaller brush, but I wasn't. I wasn't that clever going into this step. So I just washed and dried my brush, gave it a good squeeze on my paper towel, and I'm gonna start my, um, my sun with a very little bit of white paint on my brush. So you do not need much, just a little tiny bit. And I'm gonna have mine somewhere in this vicinity. It's gonna be maybe, I don't know, 
three inches wide or so. So I don't have much paint on my brush and I'm just kind of going in a circular motion, making it a little bit larger as I go towards the end. I feel like I have too much paint on my brush, so I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. And I, I felt like I had too much paint on my brush because I really want my edges to be nice and soft, almost like they are fading out into, into the darkness of that, that of the sky. So I'm just kind of moving this around so it almost gets into a dry type of um, feel to me. And now I'm picking up some of my white and my lighter blue on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna start to extend this out even further and getting these two colors to blend in as well. So as I'm doing this, I'm constantly gonna be wiping my brush off on my paper towel to make sure I don't have too much paint on there. And I might come back in the center with a little bit of extra white in a minute, but right now I'm just getting them to blend in together. And I really want this to fade into, into the darkness. So as soon as I get this nice and blended, and you can see that I'm softening the edges of this light blue as well. Now I'm gonna start picking up my light blue and my dark blue on my brush at the same time. And this is gonna start my transition into the dark blue area. So really what I, I'm doing is I'm just gradually going into the darker color, but as I'm doing this, I am blending it with that previous color. So I'm kind of overlapping the two colors as well as having them both on my brush at the same time. So that provides me with kind of a shortcut way to do a nice blend on the fly is taking the um, gradually just different shades of that same color and getting them to blend in with each other along the way. And then once I feel that I'm pretty safe and I've got, I'm in that, in that darker region, I'm going to just get this paint to fade off into the distance here. And you can have it as light or as dark as you want. I do want it to gradually look like it is just fading right off into that dark area. So right now I just keep picking up my dark blue with a little bit of my lighter blue to make sure that these blend well. And now I'm just going to kind of go a little bit faster because I know that I've got this dark color underneath. I'm using very little bit of paint on my brush so they're, they're talking well to one another. And I'm just going to kind of keep doing this until I feel like they have blended into each other nice and well. I got a little bit of area over here and then I think I've got a little bit of area up in this left hand corner to contend with. So I just want to make sure that they blend nice and naturally with one another. And if yours ends up looking more like dreamy-esque and it almost has this circular type effect around it, that's okay too. That's, you know, you can certainly have that type of look to it. And again, I know my paint's gonna get darker as it dries. So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of playing with um, the paint as it's drying to, so I can get a full scope of what it's doing. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more lightness in the center, so I'm just quickly washing and drying my brush. If you do need to go or want to go back into the center, just wash and dry your brush, pick up a tiny bit of that white paint, and you can just kind of overlap it again if you need to, just to get it to blend a little bit more. And then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step, so you can kind of keep tweaking your glowing sun for as long as you need to or want to, and then you're gonna wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting our clouds. I'm gonna be using my bristle brush, and the colors that I'm using are my dark blue. You could use some of your light blue too if you want to, but I'm gonna be using my dark blue, white, and brown. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna place all of my clouds into place with a little bit of the blue and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna be using very little bit of paint, so they're gonna end up looking really nice and wispy. And once I got them in place, then I'm gonna go with a little bit of white and add some highlights on the side towards the sun and maybe a little bit more shadow on the sides that are away from the sun. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a very tiny bit 
of my dark blue paint and a very tiny bit of my white paint. And the reason why I'm choosing to use them on my brush at the same time as opposed to using the pre-mixed lighter blue is so I have a good variety of tones and shades within that cloud. So if you feel like you picked up too much paint or you want to be on the cautious side, just dab your brush on your paper towel. That will ensure that you have very little bit of paint. I'm going to have an assortment of clouds all over um, except for where I want my dove to go. So I'm going to have my dove kind of in this vicinity with its basket somewhere around here. I'll probably have a cloud coming in through here. It might be a little bit behind the basket, but the rest of the clouds are going to be primarily over on the right hand side. So that way my dove stays nice and in focus. But you can put them behind your dove if you want to too. That would totally happen in the sky. So I've got my paint on my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm just starting to rub it into place. I don't have, again, much paint on my brush and because I am using a firm bristle brush, this allows me to get these soft edges because I get to move the paint as it's on my canvas and move it around while it's still drying. And I'm keeping these soft edges to it so it ends up looking nice and fluffy, so to speak. So that's gonna be one down there. I think I'm gonna have one in this vicinity. And again, I'm just using that dark blue and the um, white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna reload because I feel like I'm, I'm running out here. I want this one to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just kind of using my brush in a circular fashion. You could certainly just rub your brush left to right if you wanted to. I'm gonna have a big one kind of coming across here. So I'm loading my brush with a bit more paint, but again, I'm erroring on the side of caution. I don't want too much paint to, to happen here. So I've got, I think I'm gonna have one kind of up in this vicinity. And again, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush in a circular kind of fashion. And there are no two clouds alike in this world. So you can really have your cloud formation however you'd like to, but I'm just kind of going for some nice, loose, wispy clouds that are gonna look really kind of delicate within the sky. Maybe that summer or that spring breeze is just kind of taking them through the sky in a nice gentle fashion. I'm gonna have this coming all the way down in through here. Maybe I've got another little one in through here. And you can already see I've got some different tones and values within um, the paint because I'm using those two colors on my brush at the same time. And I'm making sure I kind of have some um, different shapes throughout my cloud formation, but you can, again, maybe you want yours to all look the same and they have, you know, similar looks to them, but I like my clouds to be of a variety of shapes as I go through it because that's when the imagination starts to take over and you want to just lay in the grass below your, your clouds and look up and just imagine them to be whatever fun shapes that... Um, you see with your imagination running wild. I used to do that all the time. Just sit in the park <laughs> and look up at the sky and just imagine maybe this looks like a dinosaur or, you know, just have fun with it. So now that I've got them in shit in place, I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown paint on my brush. I did not wash my brush. And this is going to add my shadows, which are going to be kind of on the opposite side of the sun. So if the sun is there, I'm putting the shadow on the bottom or the left side of these ones over here. So I'm just really touching a bit of that brown in through that paint. So it adds a bit more darkness to it on the opposing side from um, where the sun is. And again, this doesn't have to be anything fancy. Maybe I've got... Um, you know, a couple in through here with a little bit more of that darkness on them. It doesn't have to follow an exact rule of it being, you know, on the left or on the right, but I, I want mine to be darker where it's a little bit further away from the moon or the sun. I want a couple of little wispy clouds in through here. So I'm just using the remnants on my brush to give myself the illusion that there's even more clouds just kind of dusting themselves by in through here. And now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white without washing my brush. This is gonna provide me a beautiful highlight on the edge of the um, cloud that is nearest to the sun. So again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. I'm just giving it the illusion that there's these little pockets of bright 
spots that are being kissed by the by the sun as I move up towards the um, ones that are really close to the sun those are going to be much brighter so I'm going to add much more of the lightness into these little clouds the edges that are closest to the to the sun and you might have little um, clouds that are peeking through each other you know just kind of have fun with the way that you want to form these clouds um, maybe you have little wispy pieces coming out the edges of them just it, use your imagination let them let them be as vibrant as you want them to be maybe this one's got this really bright part that's looking right at the sun and is being illuminated by the the edge of the um the sun i might have called it a moon once or twice but it's definitely <laughs> the sun i'm trying not to call it a moon but with the dark background it my brain is telling me it might be a moon but not with these beautiful clouds and once we put all those sun rays on there it'll definitely resemble a beautiful summer or springtime sun and then you can keep tweaking these as much as you want step back from it if you feel like you need to add anything else to it feel free to do so i think that's going to do it on mine and then we're going to be using this let's we're going to use this large brush for the next step so once you've got all of your beautiful clouds in place I'm adding just a little bit more warmth to it with that uh, brown. Once you've got them all in place, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting the sunbeams onto our beautiful, vibrant spring sun. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using white paint and perhaps a little water. So how I'm gonna do this, I really want the center of the sun to be uber super bright. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using white in there. And then I'm using a firm bristle brush, which is going to allow me to kind of drag or pull the paint out from the center of that sun. Um, so I may use a little bit of water to get it to go nice and, and thin as I go. But I do want to forewarn you before you start this step that you want to make sure that your, your canvas is dry, especially if you're going to be using a little bit of water in the equation because you don't want to pull the previous paint off of the canvas if you're using a little bit of water. But the water is going to allow that paint to be a little bit see-through as you're pulling it out with these sunbeams. Again, I'm using a firm bristle brush, so I my brush has the strength to pull it. If you're using a softer brush, you're definitely gonna wanna use a little bit thinner paint, which means maybe a little bit more water or fluid medium within your paint, which will allow it to stay um, pliable and, and moist throughout the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white paint and I'm gonna kinda load up the center of my sun, something like this. And I don't need a bunch of paint on my brush. I want the center to be nice and light, but as I'm pulling the beams out, I don't need a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm gonna take my brush and wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to be using the slender side of my brush. I have a flat brush, so it's gonna be wide this way, and it's gonna be slender this way. I'm gonna be holding it and pulling the beams out with the slender side of my brush. They will always be coming from the center of my sun. So I'm gonna start and just kind of pull it out like this. And they don't all have to be the same length. I feel as if um, I'm not able to pull them out far enough, so I am gonna pick up a touch of water on my brush in a second here, but you can see how it's almost making a starburst effect around the center of that um, of that moon. I'm adding a tiny bit of water to my brush right now so I can get these to pull out just a little bit further and to give um, a little bit more length to some of them. And I'm just doing it in a continuous brush stroke. I'm not terribly concerned about, again, one being longer than the other or shorter than the other. And you might if you're doing the same technique as I am, begin to make yourself a bald spot in the middle of your sun. Don't worry about that. I've, I've got a way for us to correct that in a second. And of course you can do this as many times as you want or bring it out as far as you want. I've got mine coming out pretty darn far. And then once you've got all of the beams in place, I'm gonna pick up more white paint on my brush. Not a lot, but enough 
to fill in that center. So I'm going to fill in my center with some polka dots with like a little dabbing type technique to make sure that this center is nice and bright. And of course, you could certainly, if you needed to or wanted to, dry that center um, and get it to be even whiter, however, however white you want it to be. And if you need to pull out any more of these, feel free to do so. And then we are gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful sun beams on here, you can put your large brush away. Now I'm just gonna keep tweaking this. <laughs> you can put your large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're drawing an outline of our bird. I know I mentioned that we would be using our small brush for the next step, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna be using the, the chalk. <laughs> I didn't really change my mind. I think I just misspoke is what I did. So I'm gonna use my chalk to do my outline of my bird. You could certainly use a pencil or whatever is nice and visible and easy for you to make corrections if you need to. Um, I'm gonna guide you into a couple of shapes that we'll make as, um, as our base for the bird to get the form into, um, into a good proportions. And then we'll just draw a nice easy outline and we'll color it in in a, in a future step. But when I teach painting birds, I do like to um, teach that every bird can be started with two basic shapes a circle which represents the head and an egg which represents the body portion or the main like torso portion of the bird with the pointy part of the egg being where the tail usually comes out. So that's how we're gonna start. We're gonna start with a circle to represent the head and an egg to represent the body and then we'll connect them with some various lines um, which would happen with every bird. They, all birds have different size wings and beaks and tails. It could be a pelican, it could be a flamingo, it could be an eagle. They all have different length necks or different size beaks, different size wings, but we can start them all with an egg in a circle. So I'm gonna have my head of my dove is gonna be in this vicinity and through here. So to know where that is, I'm gonna be about I would say if this is the center of my canvas in through here, I'm coming down about a third of the way down my canvas and then in maybe about an inch or so. I'm making myself a circle that is about an inch wide by an inch tall. So it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just something that's gonna represent um, the, the, the head that we'll be able to, um, to, to attach to our body. So then the egg that I'm gonna make is gonna be in a diagonal um, way, away from the head, about a inch is where we're gonna start it. So if you come down here about an inch, that's where we're gonna start it. And then the pointy part of the egg, just keep coming in this direction. I'm gonna have the pointy part of the egg right about here. So this is maybe about two and a half to three inches in length in through here. The width of my egg is gonna be a little bit wider than my head. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself an egg type shape in through here. And it doesn't have to be much wider than the head. Um, just a little bit wider is fine. And of course we can certainly adjust these as, as needed when we paint it. So then I need to connect my head to my body. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start at the top of the head on the left hand side and I'm gonna give it a really kind of a, almost a straight line until it meets in with the egg and just make sure that it naturally kind of bends into that egg a little bit. On the head, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna, but I'm starting down at the bottom part of the circle. So I'm starting down in through here and then it's gonna bump out in through there. I'm gonna put myself a little beak on my dove. So this beak is just gonna be about halfway down the head and it's just gonna kinda of come out just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We're just kinda of giving it a shape where we want to, where we want to um, have it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put myself on a tail. So this tail starts about in, in this vicinity in through here, it's gonna, our bird is a little bit tipped. We're kind of seeing the underside of the bird. I'm gonna have the tip of my tail 
which is going to be, let's see, if this is the size of my egg, it's just about as tall or as far away as that egg is for me. So if you kind of measure your egg and just go about that far away, that's about where I'm going to have the tip of my tail. And then what I'm going to do from this left-hand side of my egg, I'm going to bring this out in through here. And then I'm just going to make myself a couple of little ripples that meet the end part of that tail. On the right hand side, I'm going to start this tran th this transaction of the tail or where the tail starts a little bit lower than this. So I'm going to come down a little bit farther in through here because we're seeing the tail a little bit in a, in a different fashion on this side. And then I'm just making myself a couple of little scoop type marks in through there that's going to meet the end of the tail. Now I need a couple of beautiful wings to happen here. So my first wing is going to be the one that's closest to us in through here. I'm going to start this right about where that um, egg meets the neck. So somewhere in through here is where I'm going to start it. And the bottom part is going to end up right about where the bottom part, where the tail meets the egg. And then the tip of this wing is going to be way up here. So I've got the tip of my wing up in through here. It's about an inch away from the top of my canvas and maybe about, I don't know, maybe three or so inches away from the left-hand corner. I'm going to do connect this dot to here with the top part of the wing. So this is going to have the, um, the kind of the firmest part of the wing to, um, to work with. So I'm going to bring this kind of scooping down like this and I'm going to have a little bit of a bump of sorts in through here, the main structure of that particular um, wing. And then all the rest is just going to be the light feathers that come along the edge. So I'm going to have a nice one up and through here and then maybe I'll have a few lining it like this and then once I start coming down along this side, I'm just going to give it a whole bunch of little um, curved lines like I did the, the tail itself. And then we'll go ahead and we'll work on the other one. I, I just kicked it out a little bit more. You can, of course, adjust yours as much as you need to. The other wing, we're just going to see a portion of it. Um, and we're not going to see this whole underside. We're just going to see the, the top side of it. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to start it right about where my circle and my neck meet. So this is going to start right about in through here and it's going to come up this wing. I would say about maybe two inches. So somewhere in, in this vicinity is where it's going to kind of disappear behind this wing. And the tip of this is going to be up in through here. So I have mine right about in the middle of these two goes straight up and it's a bit shorter than this one or a bit farther away from the top of my canvas. And then again, I'm going to do the outside edge of it first. So I'm going to kind of mimic what I've done over here, but on the other side. So I've got this kind of coming down a little bit and then I bump it out just a little bit to get that um, rounded, the rounded edge like this one here. And now I'm just going to do my, my feathers on the outside portion of it. So I've got this something like this, and then I'm just going to give myself some pretty pointed feathers in through there, and then it's just these little ripples. And that is all we're going to do for the outline of our bird. We are going to definitely use our small brush for the next step. <laughs> so once you've got your outline of your bird, you can put your chalk away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the base coat of our bird. I'm going to be using my small brush and the colors I'm using are black, white, and brown. And I'm going to, in essence, kind of make myself a nice, calm, medium gray type of a color. So I've got uh, my white, which I will separate some of this out so I can utilize it as my base coat. And then I'm adding a little bit of brown to it and a teeny touch of black so I can get myself, let me turn my palette so you can see this a little bit better. I'm getting myself a medium type of gray. This is gonna work really nice as a base coat for our bird. So that way when we want to go and add the highlights on the bird, we will have this beautiful base to work from. Um, I realize that the bird is in fact white, but when 
you want to add dimension to a white type of object, you have to have something that's darker than white in order to accomplish that. So we're going to start with a gray type color. I'm going to paint the entire thing with gray except for this little piece back here on this particular wing because I, I don't want to lose the information for when we do the details at where this wing meets this wing. I don't want to lose this little V. So while I, I just mixed my gray paint onto my um, brush, I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint just to get this area here to look a little bit darker than the rest. So I have the gray on my brush. Now I just picked up a teeny bit of black paint and this is going to give me a slightly darker shade of my gray right in through this area. So that way I won't lose the information that this particular section is different from these two. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint up this entire wing with the remnants of that black plus my gray paint. I'm going all the way to the edge of my, um, my chalk. If you still have chalk that's left over around your edges after you're done with this step, you can certainly use a tiny bit of water to get rid of the remnants of the chalk or just make sure that you paint all the way to the edges of your chalk and you won't have to worry about that. But I know during these types of process, sometimes we, we find that we're looking at our outline and we're like, oh, I wish that this part was not that far out as far as my chalk mark. So you just can kind of leave that chalk there and just erase it when you, when you want to with some water. And then I just continue to keep picking up my, um, my light gray color that I created. And I know that this gray is gonna get a little bit darker as it dries. So I have kind of planned for that throughout the process, but I do know again that it will be darker than white and that is really all I'm, I'm shooting for here. I'm not shooting for anything perfect other than something that I'm going to be able to add highlights to and I wouldn't be able to do that if I had um, done the base coat in white. And I'm also painting my little beak with this color so you can certainly um, do the same. We're, we'll add the colors on top of it later and if you need to reshape anything, you can certainly go ahead and do that. And I'm just, you can do a, a thick coat of this. It doesn't have to be thin. Um, you can certainly use a good amount of paint. I'm just going right into this tail feather, the end of it. And if it ends up being a little bit streaky, and if you can still detect some of your blue background underneath it, that's okay because we're, we still have highlights and shadows to go and the details on the actual bird itself. This is just providing us that base coat that is going to allow us a, a, an easier time to <laughs> when we go to paint those, um, those details on there. But again, if you can still see some of your background at this point, no worries. But I am using a good amount of paint on my brush and just making sure I go all the way up to my little pencil mark or my um, chalk mark and you can see as I just completed that little line that you can still see the separation between the, the front wing, the body, and that back wing. And now I'm just going right up to my little edges trying to keep that scalloped type um, look to the edge of this wing. And if you lose some of that, that's okay. You can always bump out one of the wings a little bit or the feathers a little bit or you can add some of your background color in between them to get them to separate a little bit around the edges if you wanted to. And then we are going to be using our chalk for the next step. So once you've got your base coat on your beautiful bird, you can put your small brush away wherever you'd like to. Take out your chalk or whatever writing utensil you're using and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are drawing an outline for our basket and the eggs that are sitting within the basket. So I'm going to use my chalk again. Um, so you can really have your basket as large or as small as you want. This basket could be carrying one egg or two eggs or two dozen eggs. You can make your basket as large as you want. Um, 
or as small as you want. <laughs> I'm just going to try and get my basket to be um, large enough to hold, you know, quite a few eggs and small enough so my bird doesn't drop to the ground. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want mine to be too, too big, but you can certainly make yours as realistic or unrealistic as you would like. So I know that I want my bird to look like it's in motion. So therefore, in my head, the basket needs to look like it's in motion as well. So I've got my basket is going to be tipped and the bird is going to be carrying it. It's, it's um, feet are going to be in through here. The, um, the handle of the basket is going to be coming almost straight down, maybe a little bit at an angle, but the basket itself is going to be tipped and it's going to, the top is going to be here and the bottom is going to be here and then all my eggs are going to sit inside of it. So if you made your bird in a different place than mine or in a different size than mine, that's just my thought process as I'm creating my basket. And I'm just going to have a very generic looking basket with some um, pastel style eggs in it. So I'm going to have the edge of my basket, the right edge of my basket, is going to be a little bit farther to the right than my beak. So if I go a little bit, maybe an inch to the right of my beak, or a half of an inch, and then come straight down, I've got the corner, the front right corner of my basket right about here. It's below my tail, um, it's a little bit to the left of the center of my canvas, and maybe up, maybe about three inches or so. The top left hand corner of my basket is going to be just shy of my, or just maybe about an inch away from my tail, somewhere in through there. And then if my basket is tipped, I'm going to have the bottom portion of my basket is going to be a little bit more narrow. So I'm going to put it somewhere in through here and then do a similar angle over on this side. And then you can just connect your dots. I'm going to connect mine with a little bit of a curve to make it have a little bit of shape to it. So something like that, and then I'll just connect my edges in through there. I'm not going to put my handle on right now because the handle I'm going to have going in front of my eggs, um, and we're just going to see a little portion of it. So I'm not going to draw my handle, but I am going to draw some eggs. So um, in my um, head, I think that a regular size egg is kind of the similar size as the head of a dove. <laughs> so I'm not going to make mine much bigger than the head of the dove or it's going to be kind of around the same size, but you can certainly make yours whatever size that you would like to. Maybe you want yours bigger or smaller than mine. I'm going to have some um, in front of others, maybe like this. I'm not going to put a ton. That's Let's see, I'm going to have three, one, two, three, four colors. Maybe I'll have another little piece over here, maybe a big one in through. Oh, that one's going to look like it's falling out, but that's okay. Maybe I'll have one up in through here. Maybe this one's going to be. You can have fun with how you, how you place them. I've got, I think that's good for me. I got eight eggs. Maybe you put a dozen in yours, but that's looking good for me. So that's all I'm going to do for that step. So I, we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So you can just get that out and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting the base coat for our basket and our eggs. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are green, pink, orange, yellow, white, and brown. So everything except for blue and black on this one. So how I'm going to do this is I am going to do the base coat of all of these a little bit um in a, it does not have to be the perfect color <laughs> kind of sense. I'm just doing a base coat. So I'm gonna do like a tan color for my basket. It's just gonna be a flat color. I'm gonna do light pastel -y colors for the eggs. And again, I'm just painting them flat right now. I will add the dimension to them on a future step. So for my basket, I want this to kind of look like a wicker kind of basket. So I'm going to be using brown and white. I'm going to make myself a custom color. So brown, white, and I'm also going to put a little bit of yellow and a little bit of my orange in there at the same time. I think maybe a little bit more yellow and a little bit more orange will be warranted. So ooh, let me turn my palette so you can really see the color that I'm getting here. So this is the type of color I'm going for, just almost like a nice tan, um, medium tone kind of color. I'm going to add a little bit more 
lightness to it, so just a touch more white. So this is where I'm going with my tan wicker basket. You can certainly make yours of any shade of um, light wood, I guess, that you would like. And then I'm just going to color it in. I'm not terribly concerned about uh, it being perfectly covered at this point because, again, I'm going to be adding all of my dimensional elements on a future step. So I'm just getting the base coat on here. And again, if you want to reshape it while you're, while you're doing this because you're saying, oh, I want it to be a little bit wider or a little bit taller, you can certainly do that. And even on my side where my egg looks like it's going to fall out, maybe I make my basket a little bit wider on that, on that corner over there. So I just, I just changed, you know, made mine a little bit wider on the fly to make it so that little egg doesn't fall out a bit. But once I've got this coat on here, I've got um, my eggs to go. So I'm going to wash and dry my little brush. And I'm just having mine soft, pastel-y, spring kind of colors. So every um, one of my bright colors, I'm going to use that plus a little bit of white. So I'm going yellow and white for a couple of them. Then I'll go orange and white, pink and white, green and white, and it's just going to make these light, soft, pastel-y colors. So I think I'm going to have my yellow one. Let's put the yellow one right here. And I have eight eggs and four colors. So you can probably do the math on that. I'm going to do two of each, but you could certainly have yours in any, maybe you want all yellow eggs. It would be okay if you had all the same color eggs or different shades of them. It's totally up to you. I'm um, painting over my chalk mark and I'm bringing it right to the edge of my basket. Again, they don't have to look perfect at this point because we're going to be doing the dimensional elements on them in a few minutes. So between each color I'm just washing and drying my brush. I think I'm going to go for some green ones right now. So I'm just using a bit of my green plus a little bit of white. And I think I'm going to have one of these. Mm, I think I'm going to go for the green one right in through here. So green in through here. And I'm going to attempt to get them, um, you know, not I'm going to try to have not two green ones touching each other, but if again, if you have some of them the same color touching one another, that would totally be fine. I think I'm going to do another green one back here, and then I'm going to do, I've got pink ones and orange ones, so I'll wash and dry my brush. I'm going for a little bit of pink and white is my next color, so this is going to be a nice, vibrant, let's see, I think I'm going to have... A pink one let's go pink here and of course I'm just going right up next to the um, the adjacent eggs and if you bump into one and the paint is still wet that's okay and I know I only have one color left after this so I don't want these two to be the same color so I'm gonna put my other pink one in through here and then I just have orange ones to go I'm not gonna do my handle yet because I've got to put my feet in place for my bird. So I'm going to hold off doing my handle. I know it's part of my basket, but I want to make sure my eggs are fully painted and my feet are in place before I tackle my um, handle. So right now I'm just picking up some orange and white and I'm going to give myself a couple of orange eggs. I'll get this one in through here. And again, I'm just going right up to the edge of the neighboring eggs. And if your eggs grow along the way, that's okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with some big eggs, I tell you. And then I'm just making sure that I, I paint all of that vacant space. But if you have a little bit of extra space unpainted in between, that's okay, because we're going to be putting some shadows. And then I'm going to use this same small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting our facial features. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, white, orange, and I might use a little yellow too. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to put a base coat on my beak and, my, and then a base coat on my eye and then I'll do the little highlights and shadows and little dimensional effects. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm starting with a little bit of orange and white on my brush. This is gonna be my base coat for my beak and I'm coloring 
my beak in through here and the best I could tell with um, the normal kind of dove, which of course there's many different kinds of doves as well, um, is that the beak kind of comes into the face a little bit. Um, so I'm just pulling it into the face a little bit. I'm gonna have the mouth coming in through there as well and it kind of um, has a little bit of an arc at the top of it. So something like that. Then I'm gonna just wash and dry my little brush and pick up a tiny bit of black paint this is going to be for my eye. My eye is going to come somewhere in this vicinity and they're pretty large um, for the size of the head that it is. So when I do this, I'm not, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm keeping the edge of the um, area soft. So what that means is I don't have a firm edge around where the eye is going to meet the the feathers so this way when I do go to put the feathers around there or um, ha have a nice soft edge around there it'll make it look a little bit more realistic so I just am really lightly just kind of tapping my my brush along those edges or you could rub it a little bit just so it's not a, w a real firm firm line then while I have that black on my brush I'm going to put the separation on the beak where the where it would open so I'm going to just put kind of a, a little skinny line down that beak somewhere in through there and then I'm going to um, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush and do the highlight on the on the edge of the nose or the edge of the beak well of course it's going to be on the side of the sun I think I had um, not enough white on my brush there so I just picked up a little bit more so I can have it nice and bright and if you feel that the orange is too much for you you can pick up a little bit of yellow and I just picked up a little bit of yellow because I think I want to um, I think my orange is almost a little too orange, so the yellow is going to help me to dull it down a little bit. Or you could use a little bit of brown, I guess, if you wanted to. But I like my elements to look nice and natural, so I um, brought some of that yellow in there so the orange wasn't so bright. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. I'm going to finish up my eye, and I'm not going to do much for the eye. I'm going to add a little bit of a twinkle and on the side of the of the um, sun and it's going to be a little bit away from the edge of my eye and then if you want there to be little um, a little bit of dimension you could certainly pull that little twinkle out just a bit but I'm really not adding much to the eye at all and that's all I'm going to be doing for my eye and my beak I'm going to be using the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the bird except for its feet. So we're finishing the wings and all any areas that have feathers on them. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm using white. I will also be using that gray color that we initially made as well as a little bit of brown. So how I'm gonna do this is I want there to be some shape to my bird, I don't want it to just look flat. So I need to add highlights and shadows, and I also need to add um, some dimension on those feathers so they look a little bit more separated. My light source is coming from over here, but it is day. It's it's the it's a beautiful sunny day. So I've got highlights that are going to be on the edges of these wings and on the front of the chest, but I'm also going to have a little bit of highlights in through here that might be catching, you know, a bit of the sunshine that's just in the air. <laughs> so you'll see and maybe uh, along the edges in through here. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to first just put on what I'm going to call the shadowy areas, which in my um, professional terminology is going to be in the armpit area <laughs> and in the in the tail connection area. I'm going to put a little bit of my original gray color plus brown on my brush. And I don't have much of either color on my brush. I'm not scooping up a whole lot. I am using a smaller brush, so this will help me to control where I want them to go. So I'm going to put a little bit of my shadow in through here as well as down in through this um, tail connection 
area and I'm just kind of rubbing it so it naturally kind of blends in with the surrounding areas. You can pick up some of your original gray paint as well. That's going to help you to get it to blend in to the surrounding or the neighboring areas. And you just want to get it so it looks like it is naturally just blending in with those. You don't necessarily want it to look too stripy or too um, much of a distinct area. So I just kind of keep adding the brown as well as the original uh, gray paint to get them to blend in together. I'm not really concerned about making individual uh, feathers at this point, just kind of adding some dimension to the body. And then once I've got that started and, and it's looking pretty pretty good to me and it's blending pretty well, now I'm going to end up putting a little bit over on this side of the, of the body itself because I know that the, the main highlighted area is going to be in through here. So once I've got my shadows designated where I want them to go, I'm going to start adding the lighter areas onto the feathers. So I just picked up my original gray because again I want these to look like they belong together. So I picked up my original gray to make sure that this blends in nicely. And now I'm picking up white paint without washing my brush. So I'm getting myself a highlighted area right here on the chest. And we're going to put highlighted areas in several places, but this was this is just a good area to kind of get you started and get you into the into the groove of getting these colors to blend in together. And you can get this edge where it's closest to the sun to be really really bright. You can make it as white white as you want to, and then you just kind of get it to blend into that neighboring color. So I'm going to do the same thing on my head. I want that top area to be really, really bright and right in the front of that forehead is going to be the brightest because that's the part that's closest to my, my sun. But I also know, again, that it's daylight, so I can certainly have this highlight along the top of the the back of the neck because that's you know the closest to to the atmosphere so you can certainly have some highlight there that's also going to help to give the bird some shape and then I just get it to blend in with my with the um, original gray color that you have in through here if you wanted to you could also add a little bit of a shadow with your brown paint around the bird's head so this is going to give you a little bit of shape for the um, for the neck if you want that to to look like it's got a little bit more dimension you can certainly do that anywhere that you put a shadow is going to look like it's dipping in a bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start working on my my feathers which the dimension is going to come from that white part that we're going to put that's closest to the um, to the sun however I don't want just a lot of white stripes so I am going to continue to pick up white but I will also pick up my original gray color and if I need to I'll go into the brown a little bit as well so I'm kind of forewarning you that my brush is gonna go kind of fast <laughs> as soon as I start doing these feathers I just kind of start picking up white and then gray and then brown and white and gray and brown so if my brush goes fast and I don't call out exactly all the colors I'm using that's my thought process the tips of my wings are going to be nice and bright the edge that's towards the Sun is going to be nice and bright but as I go into that interior and start to um, want the those feathers to blend in I will be picking up um, kind of probably alternating those colors so I have white on my brush right now and I'm going to do this exterior edge of this wing in through here and I see that I have a little bit of chalk um, that's in my sky. I'll get rid of that in a minute with a touch of water, but I'm just bringing this this line all the way to the edge. I'm picking up some more white to make sure I've got some good vibrancy in these particular um, these tips of these feathers. And then I'm going to pick up some of my original gray just to get these to blend in and look really nice and natural. And if you feel that you want a little bit more dimension throughout them, you can certainly pick a little bit darker of a gray or, and or you can utilize some of that brown to, um, 
to give you that extra bit of dimensional element. And again, I'm just getting these to make to look like they um, they belong together. So I just making sure that I've got them blended well in through here. And again, this is the outside piece of um, this particular wing. So that's gonna look a little bit different than the one that we're gonna work on on the left. So now that I've got that all set, and again, I will kind of come back and make sure that I've got all of my um, chalk removed by the time this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one. I've got a good amount of white paint on my brush right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put that white paint along this edge to make sure that this really reads as it's being hit by the sunshine. And I'm gonna make sure that this kind of transitions in a natural way in through there. But right now I'm just adding some nice bright white tips to these wings or to the, to the edges of the wings, bringing this in through here like this. And now I'm gonna to start to maneuver that brush in a, in a little bit faster of a fashion with my, my brown, my original gray and white. And this is gonna get these to look really nice and natural. I'm moving my brush in the direction that I feel that these wings or these feathers are coming out of the wing. So you wanna just make sure that you constantly are moving it in the correct direction so it makes sense. Like I feel that they come out of this area in through here. So that's the direction that I'm moving my brush in. And of course you can keep tweaking it and fiddling with it as much as you want if you feel like you want a little bit more dimension. Again, the contrast in the colors, the, the higher the contrast, which means the um, lighter to darker, if it's a lot lighter or a lot darker, that's gonna add a lot of contrast and that's gonna add a lot of dimension at the same time. So if you feel like it's flat or like it's not, you, you're not getting enough dimension on it, it might just mean that you need a little bit more contrast in the colors um, and you can continue to just kind of fiddle with that and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on my on my tail feather in through here so just added some white paint to my brush and I feel like this left side is going to catch more of that sun than the right side is so I'm going to add a bit more um, lightness over here on the on this left side and again right now I just have my the white paint on my brush and I wet the edges of these feathers and then I'm just kind of pulling it into the body of the of the bird like this and then I'm just going to kind of look around and make sure that I have all of the highlights and shadows where I want them and just continue to fiddle with it and make it as vibrant as I want, but I definitely want it to read as it's really being hit by this beautiful sunshine. So you can kind of keep tweaking yours, maybe a little bit more white on the edge of that beak. And then once you've got your beautiful bird as highlighted and shadowed as you want it to be, we are gonna use the same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it. And if you need to uh, get rid of any chalk marks, I'm gonna just do that with a little bit of water on my brush to get rid of those chalk marks. And then I'm just gonna get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our eggs. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, white, and whatever my egg color was. So you might have different egg colors, but I'm gonna be using these same egg colors. So I'm gonna start with brown paint on my brush. I'm doing my shadows first. So I have brown paint. My light source is coming from the sun. So my shadows are gonna be down at the bottom of the eggs and to the left. So I have just brown paint on my brush right now, and I'm gonna put a shadow at the bottom of my egg and to the left. And then I just kind of blend it into the base color of that particular egg. And I'm gonna do this for all of them. So I've got this one over in through here, which I'm just putting a little shadow on. I've got this one in through here. And you might not see, you know, the entire area where the shadow is gonna be. Maybe this one has a shadow that's cast from that egg in through there. So whatever you feel, um, would be shadowing 
onto that particular egg. So again, this egg is in front of this one, so I would cast a little bit of a shadow, but yet the egg kind of dips into the basket, so I'm gonna have a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of the egg as well, and over on this left-hand side of the actual egg itself. You can have a shadow on the egg based on its contour, and it can also be shadowing an egg that's next to it. So you can have lots of fun with your shadows. I'm putting another one in through here, and I just bumped into my yellow egg, but that's okay. And I'm putting some more over here on this left-hand side of this egg and some on the left-hand side of this egg. And you can see right now I'm just kind of using like a little wispy um, type of brush stroke. I'm going to be adding that original color back onto the egg in a second just to get these shadows to blend in a little bit. But right now I'm just kind of getting this dark area to emerge on the left and bottom sides of these eggs. Now I'm going to just dip my brush into whatever my original color was. So I had yellow and white for this one in through here. Just making sure that it blends in. So I'm going to actually just cover the whole egg again with that original color and get it to blend into my shadowy area. So you might find, depending on whatever color you used, that you need another layer or you want to just keep tweaking yours a bit more, it's totally up to you. I'm putting this second coat on, making sure that it blends in with my shadow. And then once I get this second coat on, I will, I, within this step, we're going to put the highlight on it as well. So this second coat provides great coverage but we're still gonna have that little highlight that's gonna add even more of a bit of a dimensional element to it. So I'm washing my brush. I'm gonna do, I think, my green ones next. So I'm just going for that um, green and white that I used originally, and I'm just doing a second coat and making sure that it blends in with my shadowy area. So if you needed to, you might you know, pick up a little bit more of the brown if it's not um, blending well enough for you, but the trick to get a good blend is you want to keep that paint moist or you want to have soft edges around. Like when I did the brown, I let it blend into that base coat anyway, so it's dry underneath there, but because I had a soft edge to it, I'm able to just kind of paint this on top of it and get it nice and next to it and almost um, overlap it and it's providing me with a good uh, a good shadow along that edge. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to go in for my, let's see, I think I'm going to go in for my orange ones next. So this was that orange and white that I had used. I'll go for this little one over here and just making sure I have a good coverage and that it blends in with that shadowy area. I'm going to go ahead and do this one too. This one is the one that's possibly going to fall out of my basket, but that's okay. Just making sure I've got it all the way to the edge and that it blends in with that shadowy part. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, pick up my pink and white mixture that I used on my first uh, layer. And if you find that you want to tweak it at all, make it lighter or darker or more pink, feel free to take this opportunity to do that. Just making sure I've got it all the way to the edges. And by the time you're done this step, you shouldn't have um, any gaps between your eggs. So just make sure that you get that paint right up to the edge of the one that it sits next to. It can look like a shadow in between them, but you definitely want to make sure that you've got the majority of that canvas painted and that you don't have big gaps in between them. And now once I've got that second layer on here and it blends in nicely with my shadows, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bit of a highlight. So I'm going to just wash and dry or wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to add a little highlight which is gonna be from the light source of the sun and it's going to be a little bit curved which is gonna tell the, the, the tail of the contour of my egg. So you can use white, alone or you can use white with your um, color mixture. It's all however bright you want your highlight to be. And as I do this, I'm just going to kind of give it 
a little bit of a curve that's a little bit away from the edge of my object. So maybe something like that, maybe some of them are smaller or larger than others. And again, if you feel that the white is too much for you, you can always, like if you wanted this pink one to be a little bit duller, you could add back some of that original pink color to get it to blend more in there. So it doesn't have to just be that bright, bright stripe that I gave it. You could certainly have a gradual highlight like that. So that's gonna be a visual preference on your part. I'm gonna just kind of blend them in just a tiny bit, but not, not a lot. I like to have that nice, vibrant um, highlight, especially on something like this, because it'll make it look really nice and shiny, especially from a distance. So you can keep playing with these, tweak your highlights as much as you want them to be tweaked. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you can just, yeah, those are looking nice. You can just uh, wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting ourselves a couple of little bird feet. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna treat this kind of like uh, how we tackle the beak, which is I'm gonna use orange, black, white, and if I want to, a little bit of yellow. So I'm really not gonna do, oh, and maybe a little brown too. I'm really not gonna do a whole heck of a lot because the the focal point really is the basket and the, the bird itself and I'm just gonna be seeing a couple of the little toes holding on to the basket. So I'm, I'm not putting on big long legs or anything like that, but I wanna place the toes kind of in a good spot. So how I'm gonna, and I don't want them too big or anything like that. So how I'm gonna do this is decide where the handle of my basket should naturally land. So if this is gonna be my basket, my handle is gonna probably be about midway on my basket on this side and on the other side of the basket. And then it has to connect to the bird. The bird's feet are gonna be, I'm assuming somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna have my handle like this and it's gonna come in through here and it will be just a little kind of a U type or upside down kind of curve where the handle is gonna be. So that's where I need to put my toes. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of orange paint and I'm not even exactly sure how many toes a dove has. So I'm just gonna go for maybe, I don't know, maybe one, two, and then maybe, I don't know, this one's gonna be the other foot maybe, one, two, just little curves is all I'm doing something like that. While those are drying for a second, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and my gray paint from the bird, and I'm just gonna give it maybe a little bit more brown. I'm gonna give a little bit of, um, maybe like there's some feathers or something coming in through here just to give it a little bit of dimension where it's coming out of the body. You can certainly pick up a little bit of white if you want to and just put some little feathers in that area just so it doesn't look like you just have these two orange little sticks coming out of the body. <laughs> and then once you've got that kind of nice and natural in through there, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint and do a little bit of a shadow underneath some of the, the toes. So bottom left is where I'm just kind of bringing a little line in through the bottom left of these of these toes and then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and put a little highlight on them. So really I'm just doing these little tiny curves for the toes. So I just picked up a little bit of white and I'm adding a little curve. I mean, it maybe the claws are much more, you want yours a little bit more detailed, but this is all I'm doing for mine because it's not where the focal point is. And then um, we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your little toes on here, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm finishing my basket. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are that original tan color that we used. I'll be using black, brown, white, maybe a little yellow. Well, if I use yellow, I'll let you know. Maybe a little orange too. I don't know, but definitely tan, black, and white to start. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm putting my original 
um, basket color on my brush, I'm putting my handle into place and then we'll create all the little highlights and shadows after that. So my handle is going to be, is going to start in this vicinity here, which is the halfway mark of my basket. And I need it to meet my um, claws. And I know that I want one handle on this side and one on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make myself a diagonal line from, from here to this left claw in through here. So I'm just kind of making myself a little line that's going to meet that left side of the claw. I want this basket to look like it's got good stability, so I don't want the, the handle to be too wussy. I want it to be strong enough to hold this big basket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it almost like a little um, V shape as it meets the um, basket itself. So I'm going to come down like this, start it at the same point up top, and then when I get right about in through here, that's when I'm going to just bring it out into a, another little section on, on the basket, something like this. So I've got a little bit of a firmer structure where it's going to be holding on in through here. And then on the other side, we, we need a little bit of a handle on the other side too. And I just need to imagine it landing in the same spot on the other side of the, the um, basket. So if I was to have an invisible oval for the um, rim of the basket, I think it would land right about here. So that's the direction that that opposing side's handle should be coming at. So I'm aiming for that opposing side to, in essence, kind of hit this marker in through here. So I'm just going to kind of come on the other side of my um, little bird foot and then just bring it down in through this direction. And depending on where yours is, you might see this, you might have met that separation point or you might not have. So if you did, great, you can bring it out a little bit or not, depends on if you feel that you would be seeing it. So now that I've got my handle started, what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm not even going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up black paint with that brown color and I'm starting the texture of my basket. My basket is going to be the darkest on the left hand side and on the bottom. So I'm using these two colors on my brush to get real good shadows within my basket weave of sorts. So I want this to have a little bit of um, some kind of textural look to it. So I'm making these little curved lines in through here and then as I get towards this right hand side I'm going to be picking up brown the dark brown and that color in through there so this is going to you definitely want it to be a little bit darker than that so down um, the dark brown and the original brown are what I'm using and this is going to give me a, a little bit darker but not as dark as the black and I'm just going to continue to go around this corner like this and give myself some texture. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wipe my brush off of my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some of that original color plus white. So they're both on my brush at the same time and this is going to give me my brighter edges on this right hand side of this kind of textural type um, weave that I'm doing. So I definitely I'm going in between the, um, the darker sections that I made a minute ago and I'm just kind of making these little curved marks. Once I've got this bright side done and the dark side done, I'm overlapping them somewhere in the middle with whatever remnants are left on my brush. I definitely want to make sure that there's a little edge to my basket and then you can add any additional little decorative um, weave that you want. So if you wanted, you know, a little bit more brown or maybe a little orange or maybe a little yellow, feel free to have fun with the, the color that you incorporate. But you can do diagonal kind of little marks to give more of a um, complicated kind of weave. You could leave it just the way that it was. I just am really, as I'm doing this, kind of keeping it 
my brush stroke consistent whether I was doing a curved line horizontally or a curved line diagonally. Whatever I choose to do, I'm just going to keep it pretty consistent throughout the entire basket. And then, of course, as I get towards this left-hand side, I want that appearance to be a bit darker. So maybe if I incorporated a little bit of orange and brown over on this left-hand side, that would get it to look a little bit darker. So that way I've got the shift from dark over here to light over here. And then what I've got to do is just, you know, make sure that I've got my, my edges. So I'm going to just make sure I've got some good edges along the bottom. That looks pretty good and a good edge along the top. So I'm going to have maybe this going in this direction. And of course, you can certainly get creative with whatever your basket looks like. Maybe you have a basket in mind that you're you're trying to emulate, making sure I've got it um, finished over here on the little corner. And then I'm gonna do the same highlight and shadow thought process for the, um, for the handle. So I'm just gonna start with a bit of black on my brush to give myself a shadow on the left-hand side of this handle. So I just have a bit of black on my brush and I'm putting a little bit of a dark line down the left hand side of both of these pieces in through here. And if you feel like you need to put any, any little finishing um, weave at that part, you can certainly do that. And then I'll do it over on this one, this side over here. And then I'll wash and dry my brush and put whatever light color you want for the highlight. So I'm gonna use my original basket color plus white on my brush for the highlight of the handle. So I have that brown and white, and I'm really just kind of skirting it down this right-hand side of that handle to give it that bit of dimension, just reloading my brush so I can get this area in through here. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful basket all nice and done, you can wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. You could certainly sign yours with whatever color that you'd like. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I do my initials, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like your identifying mark to be. It's your painting, you sign it as you would like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful bird and I hope you enjoyed the experience and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.